In this video we're going to be translating keyboard scan codes that aren't characters. Now before we get into that, we're going to make a function pointer so that we can make it so that any part of our code can take control of the keyboard input. So to do that we'll type void bracket asterisk main keyboard handler then we'll have the parameters uint8 scan code uint8 chr for character and we'll finish that off with a semicolon. Now, instead of doing print character scan code lookup table scan code, we can do uint8 chr, put that outside of there, chr equals our value from the lookup table, and then we can do if main keyboard handler does not equal zero, which will indicate a null pointer, we can call main keyboard handler scan code and chr. Right now, let's make a function for us to use that with. So we'll create void keyboard handler uint8 scan code and uint8 character. And we'll just do print char chr. Right. Now we need to do main keyboard handler equals keyboard handler. And then theoretically every time we get a keyboard input we'll pass the character to this function and we'll print it. And there we go. Just as we had it before. Now it's also important to initialize this character as zero or else it'll just pass the last character that we had last time we called this function. So this needs to be zero. Now we have what we had before where if we press a button when it has the release or if we press tab or if we press enter or anything like that it'll print a blank character. So now to fix that we need to do if chr does not equal zero then we print the char. As you can see it no longer prints these blank characters. Now we can start handling our special keys. So we could do an else switch scan code, case, and I'm looking at the scan codes of the list that I sent before. It'll be in the description if you'd like to look it up again. So for the backspace is 0x8e, so in case 0x8e, which is backspace, we can set cursor position, cursor position minus 1, print char, empty, and then set cursor position, cursor position minus one again. And now every time we press backspace, we will delete a character. So let's test that and see what it looks like. So testing backspace and now we'll press it and we go back. So that's working very well. Now let's implement something like shift. So case, we'll just implement left shift at the moment. So left shift is 0x2a left shift break and we need a boolean left shift pressed equals false so k0x2a left shift equals left shift pressed equals true and we also need to handle the case when we release left shift so left shift released and the code for that is 0xaa so then left shift pressed equals false. So now if we have left shift pressed instead of just printing character we can do switch left shift pressed case true case false. So if we do have left shift we can print character minus 32 which will just translate it in the ASCII table from lowercase to uppercase and if it's false then we'll just do standard. So let's test that out. Let's see if we can write some capital letters. A A A A and then capital A A A A B B B B B B B B So there we go. So now we have left shift. So we can do this the exact same with right shift. So we need a boolean right shift pressed and we need the correct keys. So B6 and 3, 6, and then we can do that in here and that in here as well, and then we can do shift, left shift pressed, or right shift pressed, 
So now we can use either left shift or right shift. So left and right. Easy. Right, so let's implement something like the enter key. So we'll do case enter or return, whichever you'd like to call it. And the case for that, the code for that is 9C. And what we'll do for this is print string, new line, and return. So that one's pretty simple. Hello, press enter, and we've gone to the next line. Hello 2, hello 3. Now obviously since we've done a custom keyboard handler, so for anything you want keyboard input for, you can just make a new keyboard handler function. So in maybe instead of going to a new line when you press enter, you could probably make it run what you've typed as a command or something like that. So having it this way with the function pointer just really increases the amount of things you can do and reduces the amount of trouble you have to go through to actually make it do it. Now there are some circumstances where keys might not just produce one scan code but they'll actually produce multiple scan codes. In this case we'll need to actually keep track of the last scan code that we've received. So last scan code and in our keyboard handler after we've done everything we need to do last scan code equals scan code. So that'll just update this after each keyboard handler function. So then if we do void standard keyboard handler and we can move everything into there and we need to pass the parameters as well scan code and you went 8 character so we can do something like this switch last scan code and the default is our standard keyboard handler and we'll pass in a scan code and the character but now let's implement something like the down arrow now the down arrow produces two scan codes 0xe0 and then 0x50 so on case that it is 0xe0 we need to create a new function void keyboard handler 0xe0 and the new scan code. We don't need to pass in a character because all of the characters have a single scan code. So if it's case 0xe0, we can call keyboard handler 0xe0, pass in a scan code, just like that. Now we can just do the switch, scan code. And on the case that it is the down arrow, which is 0x50, we can do something like this. Set cursor position, cursor position plus VGA width. And we can do the same with the up arrow, which we need to do minus VGA width and change this to 0x48. Ah, right, I need to break. Always forget to put your breaks in your switch case statements. Alright, so we can go da 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 da, down, 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 da 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 da, up, up, da 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 da, enter, bring us back to the start, and we can go all the way down, type hello, backspace, and such and such. So now you know how to implement custom behavior for scan codes that aren't characters. You can use this to do whatever you want, like make a command terminal, or make a game, or really anything. That'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.